with verse number 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horse, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule, rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. As we were reviewing our notes from last week and in preparation for this week, there are a few loose ends that we would like to just tie up quickly uh, before we move on much further here. As we discussed a little bit last week, we talked about him being called, or Christ being faithful and true. And that word faithful meant absolutely to be trusted and relied upon. And you've got to understand, why is it that Christ appears to the church with certain attributes? As you read the letters to the churches, uh, he always appeared to them in a certain characteristic of himself. Uh, Amen. Uh, he appeared as a sharp sword to some. He appeared as uh, the faithful and true witness to others. And we have to understand why did Christ uh, uh, appear to the church uh, with particular attributes? Why did he highlight particular attributes of himself? And it's because of what the church needed. They needed that particular attribute of Christ in various ages. And so as we get down into the seventh seal, Heaven is opened, amen, we're getting into the end of time, the evening light, the latter portion of the evening light. Why is it that Christ is appearing as the faithful and true, as someone that can absolutely be trusted and relied upon? And the reason why is because there are many that have posed to be Christ, uh, have posed as the representation of Christ, who have proven that you can't trust them, and you can't rely upon them. Amen. There's so many today that have called themselves the church of God, but when push came to shove, they were absolutely not to be trusted or relied upon. And so Christ is letting the church know, you've got to get back to me. You've got to get back to Christ. And if there's anything that the church of God needs right now in this period of time in which we're living is we need to get back to the faithful Christ. This is all about Christ, brother. This is not about a place. This is not about a ministry. This is not about a group tonight. Amen. You can't rely on those. You can't trust those tonight, brother. They have disappointed and will disappoint. They have let you down and they will let you down, brother, because they do not have the faithful and true witness among them. There is only one thing you can count on tonight, saints of God. There is only one thing that you can absolutely trust and that you can absolutely rely on, and that is Jesus Christ himself. I'm letting you know that's all you have tonight. That is all you have tonight. And I'm also going to let you know that's all you need and that's all you ever needed was Jesus Christ. People today feel like they need this ministry or they need this group or they need this fellowship. But brother, I want to let you know, amen, you don't need any of that tonight. All you need is the faithful and true. And brother, it's time for us to get a renewed vision of Christ because Christ has been obscured, amen, in this time in which we're living in. Many people, amen, are not seeing Christ. Amen, they're not actually seeing Christ. Most people do not have a vision of the church tonight. They don't know what the church is all about. Amen, they don't know what the church of God is all about, brother. They, amen, they, they put the name out there and they throw that around, brother but they have no idea what they're talking about tonight, brother. Amen. We need a renewed vision of Jesus Christ. Oh, how needed he is in this time in which we're living. Oh, how needed he is. Never deals in deceit. And because of how many are not dealing in truth, brother. Amen. So 
He has to remind the church, amen, who's in charge, who's boss. And brother, I'll tell you tonight, if there's deceit in it, if there's dishonesty in it, brother, if there is deception in it, if there is not transparency, they are not of Christ. Amen. He goes on to say that in righteousness, he doth judge and make war. And saints of God, we need to realize tonight that we are not in a physical warfare. We are not fighting against flesh and blood. Amen. But we are in a spiritual warfare tonight. Amen. We are in a spiritual battle. And all of our judgment is spiritual. We judge spiritually. Righteous judgment tonight is the judgment that comes by the word of God. Amen. Jesus said, he that rejecteth me and receiveth not my words hath one that judgeth him. The word that I have spoken, the same shall judge him in the last day. Brother, the words of Christ is what is going to judge us, and we need to know the judgments of Christ right now so that we are prepared to meet the word of God on the great day of judgment. And that's the problem around the church tonight again, is that many are going to church, brother. Amen. And yes, I'm picking on the church of God tonight. Yes, I'm coming forward tonight, brother, because many are going to church tonight and they're not being prepared for the judgment. They are not being prepared for the judgment, brother. Too many are going off the scene of action, off the scene of time, out into the eternal world. Amen. Sitting in the church of God, unprepared for the judgment because of the message that is not being preached every Sunday, every Wednesday. And all we can say is God have mercy on poor souls, brother, for the blame that lies at the feet of the ministry who is not preparing people to meet the word of God in the judgment. Amen. He judge and judges and maketh war. Tonight, you are in a war. And brother, your war is not homosexuals, transgenders, and amen, like gambling and sports, brother. I'm telling you what the war is tonight. The war is on because of this message tonight. The battle is on tonight. Brother, it is church of God versus church of God tonight. It is false church of God versus the faithful and true. Brother, that is the battle that we are facing tonight. And ministers are turning the guns on this message tonight. And brother, we got some guns to loose on them tonight, brother. Amen, brother, listen. False Church of God, realize this morning you're in for a battle whether you want it or not. Amen. We are coming for the saints. Make it plain, make it clear tonight. We are in a battle for the conquest of the souls of men and we will win every honest heart. We will win. They will come out. They will come out. They are coming out. Why? Because Christ is going to win this battle, brother. We are behind the captain. Brother, get the message that the captain endorses, and there isn't a false prophet that can stand against you tonight. Oh, we're in a warfare tonight. And the question is, what are you going to do with the message? What are you going to do with the message? Brother, I'm telling you tonight, amen, how you believe this doctrine and that doctrine will not be the deciding factor for who makes it in design. No, well, brother, it's going to be what did you do with the message that Christ sent to the church right now in 2023? What did you do with it? What did you do with the message? Amen, brother. Amen, you can hear it. You might even say amen to it. But you're going to do something with the message. You're either going to stand for it or stand against it. But you're not going to be neutral tonight. You're going to stand for God or you're going to stand for the devil tonight. That's what we're going. That is what this message is pushing people to tonight. 
And we're going to push, and we're going to push, and we're going to push, brother. Amen. And what's going to happen? We're going to gather some wheat into the barn, amen, and we're going to burn the chaff with unquenchable fire. What's going to do that? The fire is going to do it. The judgment's going to do it. The word of God's going to do it, brother. Amen. There's only two. You're either wheat or you're chaff tonight. You either got substance or you don't tonight. You're either ready for this warfare, amen, or you're going to be defeated tonight. Amen. Amen. You got to get your armor on and get ready. Get ready, saints of God, because if you're going to stand for this message, you are going to lose some things. Oh, and you've already lost some things. They already don't like you. Amen. And if you're tuning in tonight, count the cost, because they're not going to like you. Amen. They're going to fight you. They're going to preach about you. Amen. They're going to talk behind your back. They're going to diminish you and your influence. They're going to cut you down, brother. But I want to tell you tonight what you gain far outweighs everything you lose. Amen. What you gain tonight. Amen. What you receive tonight. Brother, it's more. Whatever you give up, heaven will amply repay tonight. Amen. Amen. Listen, I would rather lose, I want to lose all the chaff and just be with the precious wheat. Amen. Like Brother Warner said, he'd rather, God would rather blow the church to atoms. Amen. God would rather blow the church to atoms to secure a little small wheat than to go on, amen, with chaff and mess all over the place where the multitudes are joining in. Brother, let her blow tonight. Let her blow, brother. Let her shake, let her shake, let her shake. Brother, believe it or not, we need this fight. Amen, and we need you to be ready for the fight tonight. Amen, are you ready for the warfare tonight? They're going to declare this congregation's not church of God. They're going to declare it, brother. They're going to fight the come out message, brother. They're going to diminish the come out message, brother. They're going to line a few scriptures up and say you're wrong for believing the come out message tonight. Amen. What you going to do? What you going to do? Amen. Listen to me. Some of us have already seen too much to turn back now. God has already witnessed to us too much, amen, for us to back down one iota tonight. We are not backing down. You probably don't want us at some of your cat meetings. You're right. We got one message for the false church of God tonight, and that is come out of her, my people. If you aren't it with that message, you got a fight on your hand. You've got a fight on your hand tonight. Amen. This is not lifting up a place tonight. This is not lifting up a particular location or a particular minister. We're saying everyone that is not of God, amen, needs to be exposed, needs to be known of God, and we need God's people, amen, to be clearly manifested. And there's going to be people you had confidence in. There's going to be people you just knew would stand for a message like this. And they're not. They're not. You know why? This thing has pressure. This thing has pressure. Amen. This right here is the status quo. This is what's been here for decades. People are comfortable with this. This is easy. This is easy. But, brother, we need that. We need that, brother. Yeah, but we got to get back to the light of the morning, brother. That's not easy. Amen. But, brother, that's what God is calling us to. Amen. His eyes were as a flame of fire. Amen. That's talking about his ministry. Amen. It says in Hebrews, his ministers are as a flame of fire, brother. Amen. We need a fiery ministry. We need a ministry that's bold. We need a ministry that's blunt. 
We need a ministry that we know what you mean when you said it. Amen. We don't need riddles tonight. Amen. Amen, Brother Marshall. Already. Amen. <laughs> Listen, brother, we need a ministry that's plain, that's clear, that distinguishes right from wrong, Amen. truth from error. Amen. Brother, it's fire, fire, fire. Yes. Amen. Amen. And what happened? He had some many crowds. He had many crowds. Go with me. I want to tie this up. Isaiah 62, please. Isaiah 62. Amen. He had crowds. As we said last week, when we got a picture of the white horse rider in he, uh, Revelation 6, when the first trumpet sounded, amen, he had on a crown. But when we get down to the seventh seal, he had many crowns. What happened? Racked up some victories. He racked up some victories, brother. Crowns are victory. Amen. Crowns are victory. Amen. And we get down here, he's got many crowns. Listen to me. Christ goes out the victor. There's not one age he hasn't overcome. He has, there's not one beast he hasn't overcome. Brother, listen, I was thinking this morning, as I was driving to work, I said, Lord, have mercy. This dragon just had an all-out war against the church. Listen, there was no guessing what this thing was. They just said, look, we're against Christ, period. They were out with it. Amen. You're going to be for Christ, we're going to kill you. Amen. And they couldn't stop it. Christ overcame that beast. But you know what? When, he, when that beast got overcome, he didn't come the same way as he did before. You know what Roman Catholicism is tonight? Paganism with a costume on. That's how he went to go get the... Listen, you know how many similarities you see in between Catholicism and paganism, brother? They're the same thing. They're the same thing. All the mysticism and saints and amen, the magic and amen, heathenism, brother. Full of unbelief, just in the name of Christ. Just in the name of Christ. And you know what? Some people got fooled by this beast. They got fooled by it. But listen, you know, then we got this beast got exposed. Hey, that ain't the church of God. Amen. So we got the Protestant beast. You know what the Protestant beast is? Catholicism with a costume on. They made an image to the beast, brother. Brother, who did go after? The people of God. Got, got, got some of God's people with that beast, brother. Amen. Brother, there are striking similarities between Protestantism and Catholicism. In fact, Protestantism began to take up the, some of the exact same things that they once stood against in Catholicism, brother. Same thing. All right. Well, listen. In 1880, we blew the cover off Protestantism. And some people came to where? The church of God. Back, amen, to the light of the morning, standing on Mount Zion. Amen. But listen, you know what this beast is? Church of God with the costume on. Amen. These beasts just keep changing clothes, brother. They coming with a different flavor. But you know what it's doing? It's taking out people who think they're saved tonight. Brother, listen to me. The devil's after the true tonight. So listen. He got them. He got them. He's trying to come for us now. And the trickiest of them all, under the name Church of God. If I can get a people to believe their church of God because they have every doctrine impeccable. Because their standards are right. Because they've been preaching the same truth for decades. And if I can get them, amen, to believe they're saved and they're actually not. If I can get them to believe that they're the one true church and they're actually not. That's the greatest deception of them all, brother. Brother, you know the devil with a lot of these false churches God play. He don't even have to oppose them. They are deceiving themselves. Why? You know what's so deceptive? We preach the truth. We still wear this. We don't believe that. We don't go there. So we must be church of God tonight. And brother, to find out it's all been a system of men all over again, brother. Amen. It's going to take a ministry, amen, with some discern, with, with flames of fire, brother. We're going to need some vile ministers, brother, to rip the cover off that thing. 
Amen. Isaiah 62, verse 3, Sister Ange, what's it say? Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord. Thou shalt also be a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord. And a royal diadem in the hand of thy God. Yes. Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken. Praise God. Neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate. All right, you can't call us forsaken and desolate no more, brother. Amen. Listen, that label got to go. I'm not forsaken tonight. Brother, I'm not forsaken tonight. Amen. God has not left me. The presence of God had not left me tonight, brother. Amen. You can say the presence of God left me, but brother, the Lord had not forsaken me tonight. You can't call me that. You can't term me desolate tonight. I'm not desolate tonight. Amen. I'm flourishing tonight. Amen. I'm not in the wilderness tonight, brother. Amen. I'm not in the wilderness tonight, brother. Amen. I'm not desperate. There are 7,000, and I met some of them, that have not bowed their knee to Baal. What else does it say? Thou shalt no more be termed forsaken, neither shall thy land any more be termed desolate, but thou shalt be called Hephzibah. Yes, and, thy and that land means, hold Yuma. on. Oh, hold on, hold oh. on. That word Hephzibah means my delight is in her. My delight. Hey, there you go, brethren. All right, Mother's Day coming up. All right. Amen. My delight is in her. What else? What else to say? And thy land, Beulah. And thy land, Beulah. For the Lord. Which is talking, of, which means married. Which means married. Amen. Who's he talking about here? He's talking about the bride of Christ, brother. Amen. You can't call the bride of Christ forsaken tonight. He never left her. Amen. He never left her, brother. He never put her away. Amen. He never put her away, brother. He never wrote her a bill of divorcement, brother. Amen. He is still married to the church of God tonight. Amen. I thank God Christ is a one woman for life. For Amen. You can twist the doctrine all you want to, but I'll follow Christ. Uh, amen. And his example tonight. Amen. One man, one woman for life. Amen. You're not going to call the bride of Christ desolate and forsaken. He's married to her tonight. Amen. That's going to be his crown of glory. That's his crown of glory tonight. Listen, the church is Christ's crown of glory tonight. The crown's Amen. Represent a people. Amen. It represents God's people. Represents his bride. And brother Christ has been gathering a people here in the seventh seal. In the seventh seal. Hello. That's our time. Lift your head up tonight. Amen. You're not to be down in the dump tonight. He's still gathering. And he's not done yet. He's just begun, brother. He's just begun. Amen. That this long divided flock should be gathered into one right here, right now. Amen. You got these jelly back unbelieving preachers today that keep wanting to put this off into the future. We can get together in a back room somewhere, how we can work it out, amen, how we can work this standard out, how we can work this doctrine out. Brother, enough with all that. Let Christ do the gathering tonight. Let Christ do the gathering. Amen. I heard a preacher just say recently, amen, the unity of spirit is good, but you don't really have unity till we have the unity of the faith. Brother, you don't have unity at all without the unity of the Spirit. You're not, you're a million miles from it, brother. And I'll tell you, these Church of God fellowships tonight are a million miles away from Bible unity. They don't know a thing about it tonight because they're sectish. They are sectish. Amen. They are sect. And brother, sectism is heresy. Heresy is a work of the flesh. And a work of those that do the works of the flesh shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So what are you saying, brother Nathan? You calling those ministers unsaved? Yes, sir. 
You tell me if you can do the works of the flesh and be saved. And I'll go even further. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Amen, brother. That's just the way it is tonight. Amen. Go to Isaiah. Uh, let's sorry. Not yet. I want to go back to Isaiah 11. Isaiah 11. Tried to finish up here last week, but I wasn't quite done. Amen. Isaiah 11, verse number 11. And it shall come to pass in that day yes. that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time. My, my, my. He shall set his hand again the second time. God's doing it. God's doing it. God is setting his hand the second time, brother. Amen. And you can let unbelief take you if you want to. But, brother, amen, these church of God systems are coming down. And brother, listen, they're coming down in a couple of ways. Yes, the message is bringing them down, but I'll tell you what, most of them are destroying themselves. <laughs> brother, when you don't build according to the pattern, when you don't build with the word and the spirit, when you build with untempered mortar, brother, your wall comes down. And brother, amen, I'm excited to sit back and watch them crumble. Amen, let them crumble, brother. Amen, they got to come down. They are destroyed. Listen, ministers tonight are not being destroyed by another minister. They're doing it to themselves tonight. That's why they want to nitpick and fight the mess. Brother, you did this to yourself. You did it to yourself. You ruled. You ruled by your own means. You created division. You ran people off because you would not stand for the truth of God's word and get a real Holy Ghost anointing. You damaged people tonight. This didn't happen in a vacuum tonight, Church of God. And brother, these ministers have what is coming to them. They sold this. They sold this. Brother, I, I, it's shocking. I know it's a deception. Because it's shocking to me that ministers are in a quandary why people are leaving their congregations. I just can't believe they left. Brother, I can't believe they stayed as long as they did. Brother, amen, give yourself some props that they were there as long as they were. Amen, the patience and long-suffering of the saints, brother. But my God, the time comes when you're hungry enough that you'll leave, amen, the wicked and beggarly elements, amen, and come to Father's house and sit at the king's table and get a full meal. Amen, brother. Amen, God is gathering his people. Amen. And how is he gathering them with a ministry that has as a flame of fire? Amen. And they are gathering the people of God through a message that is divinely sent by God. Revelation 19, verse 13. That took a little while to tie up some loose ends. We'll see how much more we can get tonight. Amen. Verse 13. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. All right, he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. And his name is called the Word well, of God. Well, that's how we know who it was. We know it was Christ. Amen, Christ was the Word. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us, brother. Christ is the Word of God. Amen, and it says his vesture was dipped in blood. Isaiah 63, please. Isaiah 63, let's line this up because listen, this isn't talking about the blood of Christ. Uh-uh. This ain't talking about the blood of Christ, brother. Amen. There's somebody else's blood all over him. Amen. Somebody went to war. Amen. Listen, war is a bloody, amen, it's a bloody affair. And brother, there are going to be some casualties in war. There's going to be some casualties in war. Amen. Somebody's going to be the victor. And somebody's going to be the loser. Amen. And listen. We're going for unconditional surrender of the enemy tonight. Amen. We're not, amen. We're not trying to have a peace treaty tonight. Amen. We are trying to get, amen, the Treaty of Versailles and get 11 points going, brother, in the League of Nations tonight. 
Hey, man, we want unconditional surrender. United States has taken some heat for this in recent years by historians. But anyways, in World War II, amen. Listen, if you go and really study the end of the World War II, the Japanese were ready to surrender. In fact, offered to surrender many, many times. But they had one condition, that they get to keep their emperor. Even if he didn't have any power, they wanted him to be able to retain the name emperor. And the United States, ah, not going to work. We want unconditional surrender. And brother, after two atomic bombs later, <laughs> Nagasaki, <laughs> amen, Hiroshima, brother, they were ready for unconditional surrender. Well, I'll let you know, the King of Kings has some atomic bombs in his arsenal tonight, amen, and it will compel the enemy to an unconditional surrender. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Amen. Isaiah 63, verse 1, what's it say? Who is this that cometh from Edom with God's right. garments from Bozrah? Yes. This that is glorious in his apparel, glorious traveling in, his apparel. in the greatness of his traveling strength. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. All right, hold on. Are you getting a picture of who this is? Everybody, are you getting a picture of who this is talking about? Who is mighty to save? Who is mighty to save? Go keep reading. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel? Yeah, you got red all over you. You got red all over you. What happened? What happened? You got red all over your apparel. Read. And thy garments like him that treadeth in the wine fat. Yeah, and you look like someone that's been treading in the wine fat. I have trodden the wine press alone. Yeah. And of the people there was none with me. And there was none with me. For I will tread them in I my will anger. I will tread them in my anger. And trample them in my trample fury. Trample them in my fury. And their blood shall be sprinkled uh, upon my garments. Their blood and I will shall be sprinkled upon my garments. my raiment. I will stain all my raiment. <laughs> On who? Whose blood is that all over him? The enemies. He went to war, brother. The lamb went to war, brother. Hey, man, listen, Christ ain't no jelly back tonight. Hey, man, I know they try to make him look real soft with long hair, and hey, man, like he was just this tender little, hey, man, nobody. But, brother, I want to let you know, I talked to a brother yesterday. That's the same brother that braided a whip. Braided it, brother. So, hey, man, made a weapon. Walked into the temple and started whipping folks and turning tables on. He made war that day. Why? What fired him up? What they did to the Lord's house. What they did to the Father's house. Brother, that if you want to get Christ fired up, start messing with God's house. You know why God's against some of these ministers tonight? They mess with God's house. They mess with God's vessels. They've messed with the precious, brother. And, brother, he's coming in there angry. Yes, God is angry tonight. They were filled. Those vials were filled up with what? The wrath of the fierceness of Almighty God. Listen to me, ministry. Standing, if you will not stand for this message, you are going to go to hell tonight. Some need to tender their resignations tonight before they end up lost. Go to your local board of trustees and let them know as of tonight you're no longer the pastor. Because you don't want to be lost for all eternity. Amen, brother. Amen, amen. You say, brother Nathan, you're just being too harsh tonight. No, brother. Their soul is at stake tonight. Because of what they have done to other souls tonight. They've got blood on their hands tonight. This is a bloody ministry we're dealing with tonight. And don't get me wrong, I'm against every one of them tonight. Every single one of them tonight. Every Brother, they are not of God tonight. They mess with the precious. They mess with the sheep, brother. 
They have, why are there bones over there? And bones, why are the bones the lost house of the sheep of Israel? Why are they all over the place? Woe unto the foolish pastors who have scattered and destroyed who? The sheep of my pasture. But there are some that had no business being behind the pulpit. They had no business being behind the pulpit. And because the saints are meek and docile and they don't like to question folks, and amen, they want to be humble and they want to be right, brother, they've let you get away with some things. But God's raising up a ministry who ain't going to let you get away with it no more. Who is going to stand for the sheep tonight? Who's going to rise up and fight for the sheep tonight? Brother, if you want to be a church of God minister right now, you're going to stand for the sheep tonight. Listen, God's hand be against me if I don't have your back tonight. God's hand be against me if I trade your soul to be buddies with another minister tonight. How dare I tonight? How dare I? You know that you got pastors tonight that could be doing blatant sin, and you go to the ministry that he fellowships with and try to say that he's, brother, they will never, ever have your back. They will defend, they will justify the wicked and condemn the righteous tonight. Yes, I'm fired up tonight. The zeal of my father's house have eaten me up tonight. They should leave your congregation, and they should never sit under you again. They would be better off with their Bible and their recliner than sitting in your pews. They'd be better off hearing a real anointed message on Facebook or YouTube than sitting in your sanctuary tonight. God, help us tonight. Amen. The blood of his enemies. We're getting a picture of Christ victorious over all his enemies. What's he doing? Treading the wine press, brother. Amen. Treading the wine press. If you want to make it, brother, you better be gathered into the wine press and get all the juice squeezed out of you. Amen, brother. You're going under if you don't. Listen, some are saved by the judgment. Some are saying, Revelation lets us know, chapter 14, amen, that they were, he severed the grapes from off the clusters. And what happens to the clusters? It rots. The vine of Sodom, which is a type of Babylon, shall rot. Brother, listen to me. If a grape stays on the vine too long, it'll eventually rot. You got to get the grape off the vine, brother. But it's not good enough to just get the grape to come out. But it's got to go in to the wine press, brother. You got to lose your identity. Come on, brother. When that, when that juice gets squeezed, brother, you, when, that goes, when, when you have a grab glass of juice, you don't know which grape is which. Why? Because, brother, we all, amen, we lose our individuality and we get lost as the body of Christ, brother. Our identity is in Christ. And brother, what's that a picture of? A unified church, brother. Yeah. Hey, you, you know what the clusters are? Church of God-ism. You got this group over here. Amen. You got, amen, cleansing sect over here. No cleansing sect. 15 cleansing sect. Marriage sect. No ma divorce sect. Uh, amen. You got divine healing sect. You take medicine, you're going to hell. You got the one you can take as many pills as you want. Uh, amen, brother. You got immodesty, uh, modesty, compromise, fanaticism. And good saints of God in all of them. You got some good grapes and all, and you got some bad sour grapes in there now. Come on now. Amen. Amen, brother. I talk to some brother. Look, amen. We got people in my association. They had the Holy Ghost. I don't care what they said, and I don't care what they preached, brother. True. They didn't have the Holy Ghost, True. and you've had some in yours. <laughs> amen, brother. That's just the way it is tonight. Amen. Don't be, don't be a sect offender tonight. They're all the same, brother. They're all the same. That's what I'm saying tonight. Your sect wasn't better than the other sect. Come on. Everybody tends to think that their sect was a little better than the rest. And, and listen, I mean, I understand. That's all we knew, right? 
And for how many years you were pumped that you're the one true body of Christ and, and gave you good reasons why brother so-and-so over there is off and why brother so-and-so over there is off. But I want to tell you, there was just as off things going on in your sect. Some of you just didn't know about. That's right. You just didn't know about it. Amen. Some of us just caught on to the politics here lately. Wow. Wow. But I'll tell you what, for most of this stuff, it's been going on for years and years and years. Amen. Listen, it's all sectism tonight. Yes. It's all sectism tonight. Yes. All of it. All of it was wrong. Yeah, people got saved. Yes, people got healed. Yes, some miraculous things happened. That didn't change what you were. In essence, you were a sect. You were a sect. Amen. Brother, I'll tell you how you know you're in a sect. When you cut people off who have the spirit of God just because they don't line up with your sex beliefs. Right. That's how you know you're in a sect tonight. You say, Brother Nathan, this, this scares me. I know it does because you're not used to it tonight. Because sex aren't used to letting the Spirit of God rule. That's uncomfortable, brother. That's foreign to us. Amen. We're still worried that this a false doctrine is going to jump on us and send us to hell. That's what we're worried about tonight. But we'll overlook. We'll overlook. Come on. We'll overlook a, a lot of things because they still preach the truth. <sighs> No spirit. Amen. Brother, listen to me. There is, I got to say this. I got to keep preaching this because it's not getting through. <laughs> it's simple. You only get unity by the spirit of God. That's Amen. it. You do not get unity by any other means. If you get unity, if you get people together by something other than the spirit of God, you have a sect. That's right. True. True. That's right. I might shock the socks off of some people, but did you know that the Six Seal Brethren Fellowship people that did not see eye to eye on every doctrinal issue is them? Right. Did you know that tonight? Yeah. Amen. I can show you some, I can show it to you tonight. Amen. You know what I'm preaching tonight is the same thing they preached. Right. Yeah. Everybody wants to claim the Six Seal as their heritage. I right. sure wish. I sure wish they had some of their messages. I sure wish they had their spirit. I sure wish they had their results. Oh, wow. Amen. Where are we at here? He had the blood of his enemies. His name is called the word of God. Christ was carried on a white horse. What was that white horse? The Holy Ghost. The word of God. And the spirit of God has brought victory in every age. And it will bring victory now. Amen. Oh, yes, it will. Revelation 19, 14. I got to try to get through this. The hour is getting away from us. Amen. Revelation 19, verse number 14. What's it say? And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Yes. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. All right. So first he said the armies which were in heaven, we know this is not talking about up there in the eternal heavens. He's talking about in the church of God, in heavenly places. Amen. The armies which were in heaven followed him. Amen. Thank God we are, we are following Christ right into the battle. And brother, you better make sure if you're about ready to go into the battle, you got the captain ahead of you. You're going to get waxed. Amen. You're going to get knocked out, brother. Amen. We are in a warfare and we need Christ to lead the operation. Amen. When a fresh revelation, what are we getting a picture of here? When a fresh revelation was given them, there was a people that was ready to embrace it. When they got a vision of Christ again, 
when they saw Christ on the white horse, when they began to hear the message of the hour, thank God there were some people ready to get up and follow. They were ready to get behind him. Amen. I thank God tonight there is still an army that is behind Christ. That is behind Christ. Yes, Christ is on the white horse, and he's leading the army. Amen. But there are some others in the army on white horses tonight, driven by the same spirit that Christ is being driven by. Yes. The Holy Ghost. But we need the Holy Ghost to drive us. Horses are vehicles, brother. Amen. That white horse is symbolic of the Holy Ghost. It's a militant spirit that is out to win souls, brother. And if the church of God is going to win souls, we're going to get on the white horse and let the Holy Ghost take us wherever he wants. Amen. Amen. Thank God in every age there has been a people with a good and honest heart. And that's all it takes tonight. Listen, this message is not complicated. It's really not complicated. All right, it, it, look, it doesn't take a whole lot of intelligence to look around and know things aren't right. Brother, you don't have to have a high IQ tonight to know there's been problems under the name Church of God. Amen. It's a, it's a very simple, it, it's very simple to understand. You know those problems around the church? We're against the cause of that tonight. Very simple. We're against the cause of that. Who's the cause of it? Ministers. The ministries. That's, 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 he, every letter was written to the angel. Woe unto the foolish pastors. Amen. Woe unto the pastors who scatter. Brother, every single time. Amen. We Listen, we are obligated tonight to lay the blame exactly where God laid it. We have to lay the blame exactly where God laid it tonight. Amen. So it's very simple. You just have to have a good and honest heart. You can receive the message tonight. It says in Luke 8, 15, but that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. So there's a problem here. Either people are not hearing it, and that is a problem tonight. There's many people in Church of God circles tonight that are not hearing the word of God go forth. Or there are some who have heard it, and they're not keeping it. This is why we don't have more fruit today. Amen. That's why we don't have more production today. Because either it's not being preached so people aren't hearing it, or people who are hearing it are not keeping it. John 10, please. John chapter 10. Verse number 27. This was referenced a little earlier. I don't have time to preach all of John 10 tonight. But here's a very simple thought. John 10, verse 27. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them, and they follow me. Read, read that again. How simple. How simple. My sheep hear my voice. My sheep hear my voice. And I know them. I know them. And they follow me. That's it. Who, whose voice are they going to follow? The voice of Christ. Who was leading the armies? Christ. Who was Christ? The Word of God. His name was the Word of God tonight. What do we need to preach? The Word. Amen. What yes. needs to be heard? Christ. Please. That's it. It's simple. And when you preach the Word, it will attract everyone of Christ. Amen. And when you don't preach the Word, you scatter. Yes. Because a stranger, they will not Follow. Oh, Brother Nathan, there's so much division. Why? Because there's been something other than the Word of God going forth. But that's just the way it is tonight. That's just the way it is. And listen, it's more than lining up a few scriptures tonight. But, Brother, a divinely inspired message under the anointing of driven by the Holy Ghost. We'll bring God's people together every single time. Amen. Brother, these people were clothed in fine linen, white and clean. Brother, these were saints of God. They were being held up by white horses. In the seventh seal, the church of God is once again militant. 
We're soldiers tonight. You're in a battle tonight. Amen. You are called to be a soldier of Jesus Christ. Stop entangling yourselves with the things of the world, with the affairs of this life, brother. You're called to be a soldier in the army of Jesus Christ. Paul told Timothy, I charge thee that thou mightest war. A good warfare. He said, holding faith and a good conscience. Brother, we need some ministers with a, ministers with a conscience. My God, some of them don't have a conscience, but I, I know they, they just don't have a conscience. The things they can do, the things they can say, and just go on like nothing happened, brother. Paul said, which some having put away concerning faith, what they do? Made shipwreck. And brother, we got wreck over here, wreck over there, wreck over there, wreck over there. Because some ministers didn't hold faith in a good conscience. Amen. Well, what's that song, Back to the Blessed Old Bible? There's a portion of that song that says, Passing the Wrecks and the Creeds. That's what we need to do right now. Keep on driving. Giddy up, horse. Keep on going. Passing the wrecks and the creeds, brother. I ain't got no time to stop. I got time to call you out, but I ain't got time to stop, brother. Amen. I've got time to preach, come out to you, but I don't have time to join up with you. Amen. We're about done here. It says he had a sharp sword. It says out of his mouth goes a sharp sword that he should smite the nations. The church is victorious tonight. Only because of who her captain is. And for no other reason. Her captain is Christ. Without Christ, we are a defeated church tonight. We're done. We're done. We're cooked. We're cooked. You remember when Joshua went to Jericho? I don't have time to go over there. But it said there stood a man over against him with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went up to him and said, are you with us or are you with our adversaries? I just need to know what side you're on here. You need to know what I'm dealing with. And what did he say? He said, nay, but as captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? Am I now come? Listen, this is one of the instances in the Bible where Joshua, the son of God, made an appearance in the Old Testament, brother. This was Christ, the captain, the captain of the host, brother. He said, uh, he said, the captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship. And said unto him, what you got to say? I want to hear it. What saith? What saith my Lord unto his servant? You know what he got? The battle plan. He got the battle. Where's the ministry need to do? Get before the captain and get the battle plan, brother. Amen. Amen. I got the battle plan tonight, brother. Amen. Light babbling up tonight. Preach. Amen. Pour out the vials of the wrath of God on her. I've got direction from headquarters tonight. I've got permission to do it tonight. Brother, I've got the captain in front of me, and I'm behind him. And, brother, you can whine, you can complain, but, brother, you better talk to headquarters tonight. Brother, this message came down from headquarters, brother. Hey, the headquarters is in heaven. It came down from the throne of God tonight. You fight this message, you're fighting against God. You fight this message, you are on the devil's side tonight. What happened? In Joshua 6, after he got the battle plan, it said the people shouted, when? When the priest blew the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that the wall fell down flat. What will bring false church of God down? Let the priest start blowing the trumpets and let Zion rejoice, brother. Babylon's walls will come down. They're crumbling tonight. They're crumbling. Amen. That sharp sword. Amen is the word of God. It says in Revelation 1, 16, he had in his right hand seven stars. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Hebrews 4.12 says, for the word of God is quick 
and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. And what that sword do is smoke the nations or the denominations. Amen. Or, in other words, sectism tonight. Sectism is the battle. Little kingdoms, little groups, little parties. Tonight, there is only one holy nation. So if, it's, if the sword is going forth to smite the nations, brother, it's the holy nation against everybody else tonight. It's the holy nation. Amen. We are kings. We are priests. Amen. We are a holy nation tonight. Israel was styled as a holy nation tonight. And brother, all the nations around us. Amen. Tonight, the battle is sectism. It's church of God, denominationalism. We are in the age of church of God, sectism tonight. This is the age of church of God, sectism. Amen. We've all been affected by it tonight. We'll close in Ezekiel 34, and we'll try to be done. We'll try to leave it with you right there. Ezekiel chapter 34. I thought I might get through this tonight. Wishful thinking. Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34. Verse number 11. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day, that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep, and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. And I will bring them out from the people, and gather them from the countries, and will bring them to their own land, and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers, and in all the inhabited places of the country. That's good, that's good, that's good. He said, look, I'm going to search my sheep out. Some false shepherds have scattered the flock. But Christ said, I'm going to go find them. I'm going to go find them tonight. I'm going to go hunt them down tonight. I'm burdened about them tonight. You know there's some sheep tonight. They're hurt. They're hurt. You know, there's some that have walked away tonight and they look like they're a million miles from truth, but you know what? The shepherd's going to go out. Amen. You know, there's some young people tonight. Yes. They actually really want to be saved. Yes. They want to be saved, but they were devastated when they found out the political game that the church yes. of God had become. Amen. When they saw, amen, a message preached up here but not lived out there. Right. When they right. saw, amen, that there was one standard for some people right. and there was a different standard for others. Yes. That if you were related to the pastor, yes. there was a standard for you. Amen. And if you were just a lay member's daughter, right. there was a different standard for you. Right. Come on. They saw it tonight. Yes. They felt it. Yes. They hurt tonight. You got some parents tonight. They had to watch their children hurt. Yes. They had to watch their children suffer at the hands of this system. Yes. And because they didn't know what else to do, they didn't know who to turn to. Right. You know, there's some tonight, every minister they turn to let them down. Every single yes. one. Yes. There was some they went to and said, this minister, if I can sit down with him, this is my last hope. And he let him down. That's right. He was just another one of the good old boys. He backed the ministers. He backed, the, he backed his ministerial buddy. And so they said, you know what? I'm done. Forget the ministry. Forget the church of God. I forget all of this. I'm going out into the world tonight. And Jesus Christ is saying, listen, I'm coming for him tonight. I've got some vile ministers. That are going to stand for what's right. Yes. They're going to stand against every false minister. Don't care about their last name. Right. Don't care about who they are. Don't care how much money is in their pocket tonight. Right. Yes. Don't care who their friend is tonight. Yes. We are going to stand for the truth. Amen. And let the results fall where they may tonight. Yes. 
Listen to me, hurt young people tonight. These ministers did it, not God. Yes. They're going to be lost. Yes. Don't you be lost with them tonight. Yes. Come home. Come home. Yes. Come home. Come home. This is a call tonight to come home. Don't yes. go to hell when God is sending a message. Yes. Amen. That will rebuke and tear, tear down this false church of God. Yes. Let's keep it real. You didn't see the church of God. No. You didn't. That wasn't what she, that, listen, that was a, that was a harlot. Yes. That was an imposter. Yes. That was a counterfeit. That was a fake. Yes. But Christ is going out into the mountains and the hills, brother. And he's looking for his lost sheep. And he's preparing a place for them to come home to. Brother, that's why we need people to come out, not just the Columbus. We need people, amen, down south, in the west, in the east, to come out and stand for truth, brother, and stand as a lighthouse so that God's people have a place to come home to. We don't need 500 people here. We don't need 1,000 people here. Brother, we need God's people. Amen. From shore to shore tonight. Yes. We need some lighthouses yes. that are raised up, brother. We need some watchmen to get on every corner of the wall and yes. blow the trumpet in Zion. Yes. We need you some people that will stand for the message. Amen. He said, I'll seek them out as a shepherd. Seeketh out his flock. Listen, he still says they're mine. They're mine. Listen, I know they don't look saved tonight. And brother, but all I know that all that's just a facade tonight. Oh, they sound bitter. They sound hard tonight, but somewhere down there tonight, there is a soft spot. And they're saying, Lord, if you'll clear the way tonight, if you'll help me, if you'll speak to me one more time, I'll come home. I'll come home. Listen, we cannot do things the way we've done things for the last 50, 60, 70 years and expect different results. You know that I really honestly believe tonight that one of the main jobs of the ministry right now is to shut up and listen. You're going to have to give of your time. You're going to have to give of yourself to hear the cry of the sheep. To know what they're facing, what they're feeling, and what they're going through tonight. See, you can look at here and say, just come here and everything will be fine. No, no, no. You don't know what they got to battle tonight. You know how many times before they, you know how many times they've been let down by now? Some people have made life changing decisions. They moved here. They uprooted their family, took lower paying jobs, relocated across the United States only to be let down again. Right. And you think they're just going to get up and start coming? No, 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 no. You're going to need Christ himself to seek them out. It's going to take a divine work of God tonight. And the ministry needs to take some time for the sheep. You might not get nine hours of sleep. Come on. Them days might be over, brother. Amen. You might miss your little vacation. You might not be able to go on your third cruise this year. Come on. The sheep need God in a real way. In a real way tonight. He said, I'll gather them. And one thing I love about this out of all places where they have been scattered. That means there's not one area that Christ isn't going to cover. He's going to visit everyone one more time.
He's going everywhere. Wherever they're at, the message is coming one more time. Pray that the message goes forth. And pray thee that the Lord will send laborers into the harvest. There's a great work to do. There is a great work. I know, listen, it bugs me when I hear ministers say this all the time. We need ministers. We need ministers. And then they never use them. Right. Brother, we're, we're not playing that game tonight. No. <laughs> we need you to get down before God and let God call you somewhere. Amen. We need you to go forth. Listen, don't come ask me if you can go preach a revival somewhere. You got a message, brother? You better go. You better go. You don't need permission from me. You need permission from the Holy Ghost. Get on the white horse and let him drive you, brother. Yes. Brother Nathan ain't holding you back. Amen. I'm serious. I'm not holding you back tonight. I'd rather go back down to 15 people and have the message going out, brother. Amen. I mean that tonight. I mean that tonight. I'm about the message tonight. Yes. And we'll bring them to their own land. I thank the Lord tonight for this great gathering work. But we haven't even scratched the surface of what God really intends to do. We need a great earthquake. And it's coming. And it's coming. Are you ready tonight? Are you ready for the warfare? Are you ready for the fight? Should be, because the captain's on the front line. So now you just got to get behind him. Amen. Amen. And follow him whithersoever he goeth. Amen. God bless you tonight. We're done. Praise God. Amen. Well, let's say a word of prayer, and then we'll have a song. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the faithfulness of your word. Lord, we know the enemy's opposing tonight. We know, dear Father, he's battling hard. We can feel that. But, Lord, we also feel... That almighty God is working. My God, you are moving. You are stirring. You are awakening, dear Father. You are helping. You are saving. Father, dear God, we thank you tonight for what you've done. But Lord, we want all of it tonight. We want more of it tonight, dear Father. So Lord, help us to be prepared to get into this great battle. Into this warfare, dear Father. To fight the good fight of faith, dear Father. That we might receive our crown. We love you. We appreciate you tonight. Pray that you'll bless each one in this building. If there's any needs here tonight, we pray you'd help that soul to humble themselves, dear Father, dear God, and get the help that is needed. We thank you for meeting us here. We'll thank you and praise you for all that is accomplished here this night. In Jesus' name, amen. Shall we stand?